Hi there, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we are looking at the history of the abandoned East Fortune Hospital in East Lothian, Bonnie, Scotland. The history of East Fortune Hospital dates back to World War I. On the 2nd of April 1916, two German Zeppelin airships made a silent passage over the North Sea. They flew over Edinburgh and inflicted the first ever air raid on Scotland. 24 bombs fell in the capital city, killing 13 people and injuring a further 24. At the time, Scotland lacked an attack warning system, or even adequate air defence. In the wake of the attack, plans were made for an air raid warning system, as well as air defences including airfields. One of these airfields was located in East Fortune, a small village nestled in the hills just outside Edinburgh. In the fall of 1916, construction began on the hangars to house Royal Navy airships, and by 1918 there were six airships stationed at East Fortune. RNAS East Fortune had a complement of 32 officers and 580 men. There were also a sizeable force of airplanes housed in the canvas hangars. Royal Navy pilots were also trained here and it was used as a depot for machines normally based on warships. In 1919, an airship leaving East Fortune became the first to cross the Atlantic when it landed in Manola, New York. A commemorative plaque originally located near the entrance of the hospital can now be found near the canteen at the Museum of Flight. Shortly after the success of the record-breaking crossing of the Atlantic came the unexpected announcement that East Fortune Base would be closed and the three airship hangars would be demolished. As tuberculosis swept through Scotland, it was decided that a sanatorium would be needed to combat the bacterial infection. In July 1921, the site and buildings were purchased by the Joint Sanatorium Board for £70,000. The hospital contained 210 beds for men and women and there was also a ward for children. While the vast majority of the patients were suffering from pulmonary tuberculosis, there were a handful of those with bone, joint and glandular tuberculosis. Verandas were added to the wards at the hospital for open-air treatment and later a boiler house was added, as well as a laundry, theatre and plaster room. It continued to grow with the kitchen garden and orchard being built. To continue combating tuberculosis, services were increased at East Fortune Hospital, including the employment of more nurses and doctors and increased beds. By 1935, they had appointed their first consultant surgeon, Dr. Walter Mercer, and a sister's home was added, as well as a house for the assistant medical officer. At the outbreak of World War II, RAF East Fortune was brought back into service as a training ground before seeing increased action. Its access to the North Sea proved important. Patients from the hospital were transferred to Bangar Hospital in West Lothian and remained there throughout the war. Originally, it was used as a satellite airfield for nearby RAF DREM. However, it was subsequently decided to develop RAF East Fortune as a night fighter operational training unit. So on the 4th of June, 1941, 
number 60 OTU arrived from RAF Lincoln Field. This was an RAF fighter command unit that gave newly qualified pilots and other aircrew fresh from RAF Flying Training Command specific training and experience in night flying before assignment to operational squadrons as two-man crews. The OTU employed a mixture of trainer and operational aircraft types for this purpose. Initially, crews were trained on the single-engine Bolton Paul Defiant night fighter, with Miles Master dual-control trainers being used for some pilot training exercises. As the Defiant became obsolete as a night fighter, the OTU switched to the twin-engine Bristol Blenheim and the Bristol Bufighter. By 1942, the Blenheim was no longer used as a night fighter, but as they had dual controls and were less challenging to fly than the newer Bowfighter, they remained useful as trainers. Crews under training would therefore do most of their flying in Blenheims before converting to Bowfighters towards the end of the OTU course. In late 1944, the OTU began to receive some de Havilland Mosquito aircraft, and by the end of the war, this was the main type used. In October 1944, a Mosquito aircraft from RAF East Fortune crashed into Beach Hill House, a country house near Haddington, after a fuel tank exploded shortly after takeoff. The accident killed both aircrew and four people in the house, among them a niece and nephew of Field Marshal Haig. There were a total of 83 airmen lost on training missions from RAF East Fortune, along with 53 aircraft. Many of the airmen who died flying from the airfield were buried at St Martin's New Burial Ground in Haddington including Peter Wilkinson, who was one of the pilots who lost their lives when they crashed into Beach Hill House. Number 132 Operational Training Unit disbanded on the 15th of May 1946, and the site was returned to the sanatorium board. In 1949, the Tuberculosis Hospital returned to East Fortune where it was redecorated and reopened in April of that year. While those with tuberculosis would mostly spend years at East Fortune Hospital, in 1943 the drug streptomycin was isolated and it was discovered that it would treat a number of infectious diseases, in particular tuberculosis. In 1949, the first human trial of streptomycin against tuberculosis was carried out and it was found to cure patients. It was hailed as a miracle cure and patients with tuberculosis would sometimes be out of hospital within two years. In 1951, East Fortune Hospital had grown even further. Eventually, there would be over 1,000 beds at East Fortune Hospital, as well as a church and even a fire station. By the late 1950s, tuberculosis had decreased and it was decided that a summer camp would be held on the grounds for disabled children. Then in 1956, East Fortune Hospital was transformed into a hospital for disabled adults. It continued as a hospital for the disabled until 1985, when patients were moved to Haddington Afterwards, East Fortune Hospital only housed long-term geriatric care patients. East Fortune Hospital closed its doors for good in 1997. Before this, it was hit by an asbestos scare, when it was uncovered that one block of the hospital was contaminated with asbestos. The historic hospital has since been left abandoned and each building has an asbestos warning. There were plans to redevelop the derelict buildings into luxury homes in 2006. 
Due to the historic nature of some of the buildings, developers were not allowed to just knock them down. Instead, they needed to restore the buildings and incorporate them into their plans. The plans would be denied by council chiefs, who said that the plans had failed to safeguard the listed buildings. If you would like a Drone Man Scotland keyring, you will find it hanging from the fence at this gate, just off the B1377. Good luck! Once again, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like, share and comment on the video. It is very much appreciated. See you next time and bye for now.